not my happiness, but my joy. There is a difference between joy and happiness. You can get joy from only one source in this life. You can get happiness from a lot of things, from places, from people, from things, but you can only get joy from one source. That's why Jesus said, I came that you might have joy and that you might have it abundantly. All oh, praise his holy name. All oh, the preachers ready to preach. Praise his holy name. Come on and stand with us. Come on and stand with us. Lord, what 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 a good day this is. What a what a good day this is. The kids have given you their version of joy. They've given you their style of joy. Preston, let me tell you, son. The devil wants what you got. But you ought to tell him no every time he come in your direction. He want what you got. But tell him, uh-uh. God gave me this boy. And you won't miss it until you've given it away. Oh, praise his holy name. Are you ready for the preacher now? I just don't want him to have to jump on a running train at the speed that it's going because he will preach the word. All you have to do is give him a little time. Somebody beside me, remember, won't it be Grand, won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? Oh, won't it be grand? I'm going home, I'm going home to live with Jesus. Won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? Oh, then won't it be grand? Come on, you got it now. Come on, help me say, won't it be grand? Where you going? Home. Yeah, Lord. The, the old folks said it like this. When I get through praying down here, out in the sunshine, out in the rain I'm going home to live with Jesus won't it be grand now come on help me say oh then won't it be grand won't it be grand won't it be grand yes I'm going home to live Just slowly, just keep right there. Let me tell you, I was listening to what a friend we have in Jesus. And do you know after verse 1, it just kept dying out, dying out, and dying out. It's more than one verse to it. And many of us don't know anymore because we won't try to participate. But Danny, what, what, what they used to do for us back down south, we didn't have one of these things. But they tell you, sing the song. And you had to be heard. You, you hear some of the most.
old folks say, bring, bring it on out, boy, bring it on out. I, you wonder why I talk loud, Sister Zandra, and I don't have to have this thing. But I came up with a loud family. If you talk low, you didn't get nothing there. But if you know that God has been good to you, if you know that you know that you know God's been good to you, I, I, I don't want you to hold back. Somebody right beside you might just need to know that it's a good thing to know that it's grand when you know that you're going home to live with Jesus. Last time around, this is your last time. Well, you say, preacher, how do you know it's my last time? I'm just going by what the words say. We've got from only exhale to inhale. And while I've got a chance to do them both, I'm going to work with them. If you'll help me just this one time around, and Pastor Hardaway is going to be coming. Oh, then won't it be grand? Oh, then won't it be grand? I'm going home to live with Jesus. Yes, I am. Oh, 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 won't it be grand? Going home. To live with Jesus. Come on, one more time for the Holy Ghost. Oh, won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? Now point at yourself and say, I'm going home to live with Jesus. Come on, one more time. I just like that. Oh, won't it be? Won't it be grand? Won't it? Won't it be grand? I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. Everybody here going home. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, going home to live with Jesus. Won't it be? Come on and put your hands together. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Come on and give God some praise. Give God some praise. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be where? In my what? In my what? In my what? Then come on, somebody, in your mouth, let's give him some praise right now. Come on, give God. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Ah, oh. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. We thank God. Somebody, you ought to have something to give God praise for today. And as much as we love Pastor Luda, it doesn't matter who's up here, you ought to be able to give God some praise. If God woke you up this morning, if you were able to put on your own clothes, you know, if you were able to take your own toothbrush and brush your teeth, I know we take that for granted, but if you were able to brush your teeth, you got something to be grateful for. Come on, somebody in the room. You got something to be grateful for. Somebody, you ought to be glad today. I said, you ought to be glad today. We're nine days into 2011. 
Come on, y'all. And you got something to be grateful for. Praise God from whom all blessing flows. We thank God for this opportunity. To the angel pastor of this house, the Reverend Dr. Arthur Luda. Can we just stand on our feet and give God a praise for our pastor? Today? God bless your hearts. Where honor is due, we should give honor to the ministers who are present with us on today, to the officers of the church, deacon, deaconess, trustees, and to all of God's children. We thank God for this opportunity to share with you one more time. Amen. I do not take it for granted the opportunity to stand here but we have a good God I thank God for Pastor Luda giving me this opportunity to come on today planned before even the foundation of the earth before many of us had planned other things God already knew this day to be destined and I thank God for him. I thank God for his, his advice. I thank God for his love for myself and my wife, the Reverend Karen Anderson Hardaway. Amen. Amen. And I thank God for you on today. Amen. I'm not going to, I don't want to hold you long, but I ask that if you have your Bibles on this Lord's Day that you would go with us into the Gospel of St. John. And I want to talk to us on today from a very familiar passage of Scripture that is found in chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. In verse 1, the scripture speaks to us and says that after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And now there at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, hot, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whatsoever then first after the troubling the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Will thou be made whole? And the impotent answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me Jesus looked at him and don't say that but I know <laughs> and said unto him rise take up thy bed and walk and immediately not five days later but immediately the man was made whole took up his bed and walked and on the same day was the Sabbath. I want to talk to you from this subject. Do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? And always, I'm sorry I forgot First Lady Luda. Thank God for her on today as well. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you want to get well? 
here it is in 2011. And somebody's still asking the same questions over and over. There are some folks that are still doing the same thing that they used to do. There are some folks that are still saying the same old thing that they used to say. On January 1st, somebody made the same resolution that they made last year in 2010. But I stopped by to ask someone in this place today, are you ready, really, to get well? You know, we live in a society, we live in an era where there is a need for healing. Do I have some witnesses here? You, you don't have to look very far in our own homes, even in our own neighborhoods, and sometimes even in our church. There are some folks that have been coming every week, but they still ain't got ready to grasp what God has prepared for them. I, I looked at yesterday as I went about and I was disturbed at the news of the uh, Congress representative that was shot in Arizona and the dozen or more people that were shot, those that were killed. And it just reminded me that the world that we live in is in need of healing. We look at the world fiasco and we see the things that are going on around us, even in our own nation, man against man, woman against woman, boy against boy and girl against girl. And it still just reminds me of the fact that we are in the need of being healed. Do I have some women? Well, in our text on the, this Lord's Day, the, the Bible speaks of a pool which was simply called Bethesda. The name itself was connected to the things that were happening at this pool. Bethesda, 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 that is the house of mercy, which was based upon the cures that had taken place at the pool. It was said from time to time that an angel of the Lord would come down. And when the angel came down, the angel would simply stir the water. And when he stirred up the water, it is said that the first one into the pool after each disturbance would be cured of whatever disease that they may have. Can you imagine on that day not knowing when the angel would come, that the angel would come, and can you imagine in your mind the water just began to stir? And can you, remind, can you imagine the invalids, those that were by the pool, trying to make themselves struggling to get to the water? There was the blind man trying to find the water. There was the lame man trying to crawl to the water. There was the deaf man trying to make it to the water. There was all of those of diver diseases and sickness trying to make it to the water. But the Bible says that they all tried to make it, but there was only one. Are y'all here with me? Only one that would be healed. So obviously, my brothers and sisters, there were many who had been sick that waited by the pool for the visitation of the angel. They had been made aware of the miraculous happenings. And you know, what I have discovered is that people like to hang out where miracles are taking place. People like to be where the miraculous is happening. I, I don't know about you. I don't like to be in places that are going to bore me to death. I, I want to be somewhere where it's exciting. Are y'all with me here? I, 
I, I want to be a, in a place where folks are, if I put it in our own environment, where folks are praising the Lord. Can I get some witnesses in? And I know that we have some brothers and sisters in other denominations that praise God in other ways. And some are quiet and some don't say much and some don't even blink their eyes when they go in. But I want to be somewhere where somebody can praise God. I want to be somewhere where somebody knows how good God is. And when they think about the goodness of the Lord and what he has done for them, that they are able to raise their hand. I wish I had somebody in this place. And are able to tell God thank you I like to be somewhere excited I don't understand folks that that they come to church and they ain't got never nothing to say can I get a witness here they they they, they, they don't have nothing to praise God about they they they, they look at everybody else are y'all here with me you y'all know what I'm talking about you you know there's some folks looking at you but you've made up in your mind I don't care who looking at me I didn't come here for you I came here to praise God for myself you didn't wake me up this morning you didn't put no food on my table you 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 didn't do nothing for me so get out of my way So I want to be where the miraculous happen. I, I want to be. That's why somebody's here at Star today. Because you know that the miraculous is happening. You know that there's somebody that's going to praise the Lord. Can I get a witness? And some of us need to be real about it. Because God has been too good to us to act any other kind of way. Come on, y'all. You know, I know some, some of us. We, we get to a place where we sit down and, you know, we want to be cute. We got on our new outfit and uh, I just don't wore this suit one time and yo, 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 you know, and, and I know that there might be some dignified folks here, but you know, I'm sitting there and the choir begins to sing and, you know, I'm just kind of rocking, you know, to the music and, but then I start hearing some words. I wish I had somebody and... Uh, when I hear the words, I begin to think about what God has done for me. I wish I had somebody. I, I, may, I may not have had prime rib, but what I had was hungry. I had some cornflakes and milk. And they were just as good as the prime. You, you get hungry and you find out. And when I thought about that, I didn't mind it. I thought about how cute I was trying to be, but something on the inside got a hold of me. And I said, forget that hat. I said, forget that coat. I've got up. Sit down, sit down, y'all. So, here it was that... Uh, there was a whole lot of six folks hanging around because they knew something was about to happen. Are y'all here with me today? Here they were, there were some sick folks. I can imagine that there were hundreds of sick folks. There were some blind and there were some crippled. There were some paralyzed that were in the alcoves just waiting. And, and they were just waiting for just one chance. See, that's all you need with the Lord is just. Look at your neighbor and say, that's all I need. Some of us, that's all I had was just one chance. And look at me now. I'm not what I used to be. I don't act the way I used to. Think. I don't go through the mess I used to go through because one chance. One chance. One chance. One chance. One chance. I, is anybody here with me? It was just what somebody, you ought to be grateful for one chance. Can I get away? When folks said you wasn't going to be nothing, you had. When folks talked about you like a dog, you still had. I wish I had somebody here. When you didn't know where you were going to make it the next hour or the minute, God provided one. 
one, 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 one. They, oh God, I didn't mean to go this way, y'all. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold up one minute. One chance. They had one opportunity that would release them from the shackles of their infirmity. And this was a unique place. Because, look, think about it. Why would anybody, especially a man sick for so many years, remain in one place if nothing was about to happen? Ain't none of us stay in one place all that time. I wish I had somebody. Unless you know that something is about to take place. Are y'all here? You, you would think that after 38 years of nothing happening, 38 years sitting by the pool, 38 years still ain't got my healing, 38 years been waiting on God to speak to me. Most of us would have dragged ourselves somewhere else. But this man made up in his mind that I'm going to wait right here till my change come. I want to know if there's been any waiters in this room. Have there been anybody that waited on God? Anybody else that I'm going to stay right here were gathered on the porch where they could wait and it was said now if you look at the porch there was a porch that was a covered porch and they had prepared the porch where it was there were five porches and, 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 and they were able to sit under the porch they were protected from the heat in the rain all they had to do was wait. I wish I had somebody here. And, and you do understand that five in the Bible is the number of grace. And the pool was by the sheep gate, which speaks of a sacrifice. So what I'm trying to tell some of us is that we're waiting, but God has not forgotten about you. God has something over you to help you wait. Some of y'all think y'all waiting by yourself. But I want to know if there's anybody in this room that can say he's never left me. He's never forsaken me. There's been times when everybody else had turned their back on me. But God Oh, come on. I wish somebody would help me say this. Somebody just say, but God, but God, but God will. Well, let me get to the problem. Let me clap. I don't waste your time. Here they were. And unfortunately, the problem was, as we read the text, we learned that everyone that waited would not be a benefactor of the move by the angel. Matter of fact, the Bible very simply says, the man said, he said that the only one that stepped in would be healed. So after the one stepped in, I don't care what you did, the miracle was over. When one stepped in, two could have stepped in, he just was the same as he was when he stepped in. Are y'all with me? And it was, it, it was almost, I'm going to help somebody here, like winning the lottery. Are y'all here? I, I'm going to be doggone sure enough honest with y'all. That last week, when that amount got up there, 
I wish I had somebody here. I looked in my pocket. I had one dollar. I didn't have no numbers. I laid it on the counter, looked around, said, give me a quick pick. And walked out because I was waiting on one chance. Come on, y'all better tell the truth. Some of y'all got a long list. Some of y'all done filled out every circle on the thing. I wish I had somebody here. And you was trying to win it just like I was trying to win it. Come on and help me somebody here. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? So I, I understand how this man felt. Because I was around the pool. But I didn't win. Do I have any witnesses here? Yeah, here he was. And it was like you stand in line. And you hope that your number will be called. But you know everybody ain't going to make it in. Can I get some witnesses here? Well, some, someone would undoubtedly note the unfairness of life. Because there's some that say you win some and you lose some. There's others that will say sometimes up. Y'all know. <laughs> and sometimes down. Almost level to the ground. And even in the scripture it tells us in Isaiah that even the youth grow tired and weary. And it says that young men will stumble and fall. But this is what I like it says. It says, but those, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up on wings like an eagle. They will run and not get weary. They shall walk and not say, but look at your brother, look at your sister and say, sometimes you just got to wait. Sometimes you just got to wait. Because he may not come when you want him to come. But he's always so. I'm getting way ahead of myself here. But I said he's always on time. So on this particular day, following an unknown feast day it just so happened that Jesus was in the vicinity Jesus was on the scene and anybody here know that when Jesus stopped by something is about to happen I was in the office earlier today and y'all were singing and I heard somebody just it came out of nowhere in my head Jesus stop by and when Jesus stopped by everything else goes out the door programs go out the door the order of service goes out the door because when Jesus stopped by something's about to happen that's going to cause a change I don't know what brought him to the particular location. I'm not sure that he was familiar with this place, but on that day, he decides to stop by the Bethesda pool. And aren't you glad when Jesus stops by sometime, it's not even about him doing anything, even though I do appreciate what he does. I just want him to come by. I wish I had somebody here that sometimes I just want Jesus with me. Because I discovered that other folks with you don't mean you no good. But when Jesus is with you, he'll make it all right. I've discovered that everybody that smiles in my face ain't my friend. So I ain't worried about friends no more. But one thing I want to make sure of is that Jesus is standing by. Can I, can I get a witness? So, oh my God, I want Jesus in the place. Yeah, I want to know that I am in his presence. Can I put a pin, a pin right there? You, let me say this and I'm going to go on. You don't have to just be in church to be in his presence.
Because some of us have church happiness. We only get happy when we at church. But I need to know that anybody here that don't got happy in your kitchen. Have you got happy in your bedroom? Come on, have you got happy when you was taking a shower and you begin to think about what God has done for you? Are you been in your car driving down the street? And you got happy at the red light and somebody looked at you like you was crazy but you just kept on I need some folks that can get happy not only in church but while you're vacuuming while you're dusting while you're washing the dishes can you get happy Wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm on my, so he calls a certain man, I'm getting, I swear I'm trying to get through this reverend, I'm, I swear I'm trying to get, I swear I'm trying to finish this show, I, but he encounters this man who's been sick for 38 years, and when Jesus saw him and discovered or realized how long he had been there, he simply asked him one question, he don't, he didn't even say, what's your name, he didn't say, who your mama who your daddy is. He didn't say what synagogue did you come from? And what's your rabbi's name? He just looked at him and said, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to get well? That would have been the matter in David Nakata. For many of us, we would have felt that Jesus was being somewhat insensitive seeing the man's condition and knowing where he was. Here I am at this pool. I've been here 38 years. I'm around here with other sick folks trying to get in the pool. What's wrong with you? You think, what you think I'm here for? Of course I want to get well. Y'all know how we act. I've been around this church all my life. Why you think I'm here? Sometimes as a pastor, I'm still not sure. Y'all got quiet on that one. <laughs> Do you want to get well? What Jesus understood is that there's some folks that like to stay sick. Do you know that there's some folks that like the condition that they are in? Because there's some folks that want you to feel sorry for them. There's some folks that want the attention. There's some folks, if they didn't have any kind of mess going on in their life, they wouldn't know what to do. Y'all, 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 y'all ain't met those kind of folks. And every time you see them, something's always wrong. My husband wrong. My children wrong. The dog wrong. The cat done got wrong. And you know, I went in the bathroom, the roaches even got wrong. I didn't say that, did I? Because <laughs> they want everything wrong. You ask them, there's some folks, do you know, come on, let's be honest. There's some folks that you see, when they come your way, you have to think about it. Do I want to meet them or do I want to go this way? Because you know that when you get to them, they ain't got nothing good to say. Everything's bad. The pastor bad. The deacon's bad. Trust is bad. Yeah. Preach too long, preach too short. Don't preach enough. Holler too loud. Making too much noise. Don't they need to pray more? They pray too much. We need to do some things, but they keep asking me for too much money. Because everything they like to be 
wrong. And Jesus understood this. It's common, I said, to hear about seriously ill individuals. We're giving up the will to live. I read one particular pastor, Luke, and I'm almost done. An account of how one patient was being treated for a particular illness. Where the doctors believed he could get well. But this patient had made up in his own mind that they were going to die. And once they make, you know, once you make up in your mind, you just are made up in your mind. They sent other doctors, they brought in a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist came to the conclusion that he preferred his lot. He just made up his mind he was going to die. And now he was ready to die. And I want somebody to know that in this spiritual journey, there's some things you got to make up in your mind. You have to make up in your mind, I'm going to live. I'm going to make up my mind, I'm going to get better. I'm going to make up my mind that I'm not going to keep living in this mess that I'm in. I wish I had somebody here. I'm making up my mind that 2011 is going to be better than 2010. I wish I had somebody here. I'm making up in my mind that when my birthday comes, whatever how old you are that it's not going to be like it used to be I wish I had somebody here I'm going to tell my kids get right or get out I'm going to tell my spouse you can't have it your way no more I wish I had somebody in the, I'm going to go to my job and I'm going to not let folks mess with me no more can I get a witness? I didn't come here to complain. I came here to do a job. And I'm going home when it's over with. And I got one for somebody here. There's somebody in this place. You still ain't got release. But you just got to make up in your mind that I'm going to give God my all in all. Can I get a witness here? I'm going to praise him anyhow I'm going to lift my eyes onto the hills with cometh my help can somebody ever say all of my help I said all of my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens in the earth well when Jesus asked this man do you want to be made whole he began to tell Jesus about what he had did or was trying to do and he looked at Jesus and said nobody has helped me to get in the pool and the problem I have with some folks is they're still living in the past instead of doing what God wants them to do stop worrying about what folks said about you stop worrying about what somebody did to you Stop worrying about I wish I had somebody here What somebody didn't do for you Jesus didn't ask you About what happened in the past He just want to know If you Want To get well Can I get a witness today Can I get a witness today Look at your neighbor And say neighbor Say, oh neighbor, do you want to get well? I wish I had somebody here. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, neighbor, the past is the past. I refuse to go back, but I'm going forward. I'm going forward. I'm moving, I'm moving, I, 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 I'm moving. Get rid of folks that remind you of your past. Get rid of folks that want you to remember what you used to be and what you used to do. Can I get a witness and get up? Get up, get up, and can I get a win?
Jesus. I heard Jesus look at the man and said, man, take up your bed. I got to close this. I have more. But take up your bed and walk. That means take up what you got. Because Jesus is about to move you. He's about to move your situation. He's about to move some folks in your life. He's about to move you from where you used to be. He said, pick up your bed. Walk. 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 Is there anybody in the room that will walk with me? Get up. Get up. Pick up your bed and just walk. Walk in your pew. Walk in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus. Walk. 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 Ah! 